perish. <laughs> Hello, everybody! It's still kind of early in the morning for me. It's the 30th. I just uploaded volume 7, ate breakfast, said goodbye to my loving family, and then hold myself into my office. I'm gonna record friend sim until I start to go horse. I keep checking my emails just to make sure my boss isn't gonna call me in to work today. Uh, but I've been up since 5 in the morning reading. Uh, but I finished Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell, and it lit a fire under me. Let's get Friend Sim up and running. Let's take a look at what we've got so far for Friends. We did, like, the two uh, endings for Ch uh, Chixie, and I think it's supposed her name's supposed to be pronounced, like, uh, like, Roy Schmier, because, well, it's like LaCroix, but... Uh, but it's Roy Schmier. Whatever. We're gonna be moving on. It looks like today might be interesting. Take me to Clown Church. Uh, but let's find out if that's actually the case. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Scrolling. Uh huh. Yep. Looks like we've got ourselves a purple blood. I'm not terrified, are you? Volume 9 of Gaze is Cool and Temper's Hot. Let's do this. Whoa, where the heck are we? Part of you has always been taken with the idea of purchasing a one-way train ticket to anywhere and boarding it without looking back. Or, in your current case, stowing away without looking back. Details. The idea had always seemed so idyllic. No strings, no obligations, just you and your journey, the wind in your hair, and the taste of freedom on your lips. Your little daydream didn't exactly involve careening across a perilous extraterrestrial landscape, but then you've always liked the, to think of yourself as the kind of person who's open to new experiences. Not to mention new friends. In practice, though, this tastes less like freedom and more like noxious muck, which is what you're currently surrounded by. Ugh. It's not unlike the slime that was in Skyla's Recoup Raccoon, except the slime was weirdly soothing. This is prickly and burny and uncomfortable. Sanders? No, just kidding. You thought you were being smart by sneaking on board, jumping into some sort of cargo carriage. Oh, how wrong you've been. The trade-off for not being caught, then maimed or killed for your blood color is apparently this. You almost would have preferred the maiming. God knows you're used to taking a beating by now. Oh boy, I really want to go for the clown girl first. Ah. Oh, but do I want to go in order? Do I want to talk to this guy? Do I want to talk to the Kleenex boy? <laughs> uh, oh, he does, he does a little hands thing. I gotta go for this guy. This, that posture, this pose here, won me over. Okay. Oh, it's Azdaja! Ah, I really want to talk to this guy now! Oh, wow! Yeah! Ah, oh, he's such a DBZ character. I love him. Okay, Azdaja... Uh... Neelix. Azdaja Neelix. After what feels like way too long. The vehicle slows down and you take the opportunity to tumble out of your slime jail onto the dusty road, picking yourself up and hurrying away from the station before you get spotted. We're in a canyon. <laughs> With, that looks like it has spikes. Spike Canyon. A little while later, you're standing at the beginning of a massive canyon. Ooh, sorry. A little while later, later, you're standing at the beginning of a massive canyon and your awful train ride almost feels worth it. The canyon stretches on endlessly, miles of yawning chasms and winding ravines at your feet. It's enough to make your mouth hang open in awe. After spending so much time in various grody parts of the city, the sight of such pristine natural beauty touches your heart. You feel somewhat inspired, like you could belt out an aria or draw a masterpiece if you tried. But before you can begin exploring your hidden creative depths, you're distracted by noises coming from not too far away. You're not alone. You know what this means. A chance to get yourself one more, more of that sweet, sweet friendship. After so many successful companionship adventures, you're thirsty for more. 
You pick up your jaw and go investigate. The sounds lead you towards a trail along the side of the canyon, which in turn leads you down to a roomy platform not that much lower than you were than where you started. There's a series of sharp outcrops jutting out of the plateau, and perched atop the highest one is a figure, dramatically framed against the moonlight. Oh, this is DBZ. We're in a canyon! <laughs> Far away from civilization so they can have their fights. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, I'm trying to remember the DBZ music. <laughs> okay. At first you think he's peering moodily into the distance, but then you realize he's looking through some kind of contraption on his face. Oh, sweet. Oh man, that sounds so anime. Anyway. Recording coordinates. You look out, you look around. There doesn't seem to be anyone else here. So what you heard was this fellow muttering to himself, you guess. Hmm, I see. He's so wrapped up in whatever it is that he's... What he's... That he's doing that... Okay. He's so wrapped up in whatever it is that he's doing that he hasn't noticed you yet. This guy has got to be hankering after some company. Being all by his lonesome out here in the middle of nowhere. You're sure of it. Wave and say hello, or climb up and surprise him! I'm pretty sure surprising him would be a terrible mistake. So I'm just going wave hello. You sport your most winning smile. You call out a greeting and give a jaunty wave. That gets his attention. Ah, oh, look at him! He looks ready to start, ask you for, like, you want to play duel monsters? <laughs> Said okay, but anyway. Okay. Well, well, well. Would you look at what the pervies dragged in? The fact that your girlfriend's a pervies is well, essentially. But <laughs> Are you lost? That depends on your definition of lost. You prefer to think of whatever you're doing as taking the scenic route, just like indefinitely. Your new acquaintance and hopefully soon-to-be pal snorts unimpressed. It would be better if you did that somewhere else. Better for me, I mean. Which is the most important issue currently at hand, let's face it. Oh, I, I see your mate Sprit was not lying. You are very self-absorbed. You are a Vegeta Seto Kaiba mixture with long hair. <laughs> but you're so great, oh gosh. I still have preparations to make and I'm running out of time. You're kind of cramping my style here. <laughs> Preparations. For the game, obviously. <laughs> oh no, it is a, oh gosh. Do you have 3D monsters? Oh wait, is, is this Fetus Spawn? Are you a Fetus Spawn champion? <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. It's starting any minute now. You have no idea what he's talking about. Seriously? You don't know about dual strifers? I'm gonna die! <laughs> this guy is such a nerd! Oh gosh, okay. But he's so serious and genuine about it. Okay, okay. Wow, you're even more of an empty-headed pleb than I thought. Why are they all- why are all the, like, mustard bloods we meet- why do they always insult us so quickly? That's not a very fair thing to say. Sure, you might have made a habit of running headfirst into stupidly dangerous situations, but there's no reason for him to assume. Your voice is drowned by the crackling sound. He's levitating down from his perch towards you, sparks of energy stirring up the sand into a cloud. After meeting Sarava and Kupram, you've come to expect psionic powers from trolls with yellow blood by now, but it still kind of takes you ba aback. You stumble backwards, falling on your butt. The troll is unbothered by your spill, continuing to address you while you're sprawled on the ground. I'll explain. Dual Strifers pits Alternia's best and brightest against each other in a timed event designed to reveal the most skilled among the group. Which would be me, of course, that goes without saying. He tells you a bunch of other stuff about the game mechanics that, to be honest, goes straight over your head. He's apparently not in enough of a rush that he can't stop can't stop what he's doing to outline his plans to you, some random passerby, in a fairly de detailed manner at that. 
He seems pleased to have an audience, actually. Wow, this friendship is barely even off the ground and you're already doing great. You get back to your feet and nod along sagely, pretending to understand all his rambling about strategy and whatnot. Then you notice a blinking light. It's coming from the screen over his eye. Huh? Interesting. My scouter can't retrieve any data on your species at all. He leans forward and looks at you. Really looks at you. Up until this point, he's been paying more attention to his own voice and whatever readings he's been getting on his device, but now he's focused fully on you. Uh, it's starting to fluster you a little, actually. That is, until his mouth twists into a smirk. You get a glimpse of a single jagged tooth. You know, it's technically possible to join in teams of two. But now you're here. Is he saying that you what you think he might be saying? Excitedly, you clarify whether he's asking you to join the game as his partner. Ha! <laughs> Sure, I just love teaming up with clueless nerds like you. No. You'd be a nice element of surprise, though. I can use you as collateral resource. Fodder. A lackey. What do you say? That doesn't sound nearly as flattering, but it's an opportunity to help. And you've founded so many great relationships on doing whatever favors random strangers... Whatever favors random strangers wanted you to do for them already. Why stop now? Oh no, best lackey ever? Oh no. Okay, do I want to go with what he wants, or do I just want to... Screw this, or you'll be the best lackey ever? Oh man. Oh, either one seems correct at this point. Uh, let's fall for the bait that the writers are setting up. The title may not be much, but that doesn't mean you can't excel at it. You tell him you accept his offer. <laughs> Excellent. By the way, I'm Asdajic Neelax. Uh, you must have known that already. You're not sure why you would. Maybe he's some kind of big shot? Come to think of it, the name does ring a bell. You've heard it before when you were in the middle of inf infiltrating a bandit hideout with the mercenary Connell. You met my mate, Sprit. You must have gotten on her good side or you wouldn't be standing here talking to me. Because... <laughs> You'd be minced into the ground finer than grub paste. He's grinning like he's really proud and fond about Connell, being the sort of girl who'd make mincemeat out of someone as soon as speak to them. If he wasn't talking about her literally murdering you, you might find this reaction endearing. <laughs> Hang on, if he already has a partner, why isn't she here? Adasha's expression sours abruptly. My partner isn't here because she didn't make our greed upon rendezvous time. He says the word partner in an overdone, exasperated huff, as if he thinks she might be listening from behind a boulder somewhere and he can't somehow shame her into appearing. You remember that what Polypa said about mercenary duos, off to being quadranted pairs, i.e. romantically involved. D did his girlfriend stand him up? Yikes. Maybe it's better that you haven't been prompted to partner status if it meant getting involved in another couple's spat. You've had quite enough of that. You hope they aren't fighting. Adaja glares at you. The exact nature of our quadrant is none of your business, frankly. Now come on. We're wasting time. He steps off the edge of the plateau, descending into a crackle of energy and floating you into the canyon along with him. It's a terrifying ride, but the view it affords is pretty amazing. Soon, you reach the bottom. We should keep going. There's someone else in this valley. We'll get the drop on them if we move pat fast. Ugh, oh, I can't speak. Oh my gosh, he's so pretty. Oh my gosh, he's such an egotist, though. He grins confidently, his coat flapping behind him. There isn't any kind of wind down here, though. Is he, is he flapping his own coat with his sigh for <laughs> dramatic effect? <laughs> First blood to... <laughs> First blood to Neelix. You blink tentatively, you repeat, blood? Yes, blood. He says it the same way he enunciated the name of his competition earlier, like it should have been painfully obvious. Like I told you, our aim is to take out our opposition. Swiftly and painfully. To win, we have to be the last team standing in this entire canyon. Weren't you listening when I explained earlier? Dang it, 
You've been, proce you've been proceeding under the assumption that this was some kind of elaborate competitive LARP. <laughs> like some solve puzzles, get kind of a... Like solve some puzzles, get out of the canyon before other guy type... <laughs> before the other guy type of deal. I can read, I swear. Perhaps an arm wrestle your competitors into submission if you run into them, but no, this game involves actual violence. You probably shouldn't be surprised. You've been all turning long enough to discern that, boy, trolls sure do love killing. You've made friends with plenty of trolls who have less bloodthirsty hobbies, though. You ask him whether he's ever considered getting into excessively bodily forced poetry or streaming sick beats. <laughs> Please, you're kidding, right? Now's no time to, for joking around. Don't tell me you're already getting frosty strut pads. I can't work with someone with such a flimsy sense of conviction. You reassure him, no, of course not. Your strut pods are as toasty as all heck, but he's no longer paying attention to you, his scouter glints. Okay, I just want to note one last thing. Uh, his hair is like a weird mixture between Joey and Tristan's. I'm just saying, this guy is part of the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe. He just doesn't know it yet. There. He flashes past you before you can blink, riding the waves of a sigh for a collection of rocks sitting behind you. Target acquired. Nice try thinking you out could outsmart be me by lying in wait and launching an ambush. Cowardly move and sloppy. Very sloppy. Now prepare to get owned. Resistance is few to off. Uh. Abruptly, Adaja freezes. You hesitate, unsure as to what sort of threat you're dealing with here. But then a troll girl with the cerulean blue symbol on her shirt pops up from behind the rocks. She giggles menacingly, making Adaja as Daja turn towards you. His expression is blank, his nifty brain power is now under your competitor's control. You to echo Asdaja's statement, Aw, crap. You need to do something fast. You have the harebrained thought that maybe you can grab Asdaja and physically wrestle him from her control. You launch yourself towards them in a mad dash, attempting to call out a chilling battle cry, but it comes out more as a pathetically broken yell. Ooh, that looks like it hurts. The girl laughs again. Adaja's eyes flash bright, brighter than you've seen so far, almost blinding. Oh, hell, those are straight up eye lasers, aren't they? And they aren't really, and they're really powerful. Holy crap! You've met some strong trolls, but this is, this kind of power is something else. If Adaja were a character in a video game, and you were to assign him a quantifiable member to, number to measure his power, <laughs> some kind of level, perhaps that number would be. Well, it would be very high, is all you're saying. <laughs> It'd be 9,001. <laughs> oh, Adaja's lasers shoot at a point above you, scoring a deep gash in the rock and sending rubble toppling downwards. You reach out, grabbing at Adaja's coat. You have to get him out of here. The girl doesn't stop you, merely leaping out of the way of certain doom that's hurtling rapidly towards you. You think you see something out of the corner of your eye, some last-ditch hope at not getting squashed as flat as a grub cake. You race towards it. Ooh, hey, we're underground. Is that some kind of ruins? What are you, ruins? Your first thought when you next open your eyes is that death has finally come to tenderly cradle you in its sweet, loving embrace. Is this the part where he goes inside the tomb and gets the, uh, the Millennium Puzzle? <laughs> Okay, but you quickly realize that you're in a cave, not the afterlife, and that the reason you can even see anything right now is because the area around you is brightened by a light coming from Adaja's scouter. Through sheer dumb luck, you must have run towards the single safe spot in the entire ravine, this hole in the ground. It's as if this hole was sitting here carved out of the rock waiting to be your escape route. You might even say this hole was made for you. <laughs> <sighs> You wince, covering your ears. Could, could he keep it down, maybe? Your nerves are a little shot from almost dying from the uh, for the umpteenth time this week. No, I will not keep it down. Curses, I can't believe this. Who does that blue blood sh think she is? Does she realize who she just messed with? Wow, he looks really mad. Instinctively, you reach out to execute that slow face pat that trolls seem to find so soothing, but he slaps your hand away. What do you think you're doing? I already told you, I have a Moirail. What? 
I don't think you did. But then again, is your are you trying to have your like have your mate sprit cover all of your quadrants? Dude, you do you think you're a human? Is this what you think you are? You stammer out an apology. It just seemed like the right thing to do. Plus, you thought Connell was his mate sprit. He seems to realize what he just said. A hint of yellow touches his cheeks with barely visible in the light. Oh. <laughs> Is he thinking I'm breaking off? Breaking it up with- Oh, wow, um... That- th That's what I said. I already have a maid sprit. You're pretty sure you heard him right the first time. You're also pretty sure that those two different sorts of relationships, but you let the subject drop. No need to rile up your new friend more than he already is. You sh your shush pap might have been rejected, but the attempt seems to snap him out of whatever angry funk he's gotten himself into. Let's get out of here. He follows the path of the cave. Can't he just blast you both out? Don't be stupid. If I did that, that would cause a cave-in. Are you that eager to get crushed? Good point. You're acting just like Connell. So ready to rush in without a game plan. If he means this is an insult, its effect is kind of lost. He sounds more wistful than irritated. You walk in silence for a while. As you make your way further into the cave, you realize that the walls aren't blank like you previously thought, but covered in complicated carvings. Cave troll art, you wonder? I know what you're thinking. That life as a prince among trolls must be an enviable one. You snap to attention. Yes, yes, of course. You were definitely thinking about him and his life story just then. I don't expect someone like you to understand. You obvious, you're obviously a completely average person who will live out their life in perfect mediocrity. But not me. You don't know what it's like to be born so gifted. You're com completely average. That's you, all right. You try to m your best to be sympathetic. Having rad powers must make things really hard. What? No way, it's awesome. But, as you've clearly seen, it can attract unwanted attention from pathetic individuals who aren't nearly as talented as them talented themselves. Who are in who are desperate to have some unbeatable psionics in their corner. To be honest, the Empire's no different, and it's not like the rebels are much better. We actually have rebels! Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you for mentioning rebels. I forgot that they existed for a second. I forgot Hive Swap existed for a second. Connell and I don't really care one way or the other. We're just here to off chumps and get money. We look out for ourselves first and foremost. But eventually we'll be sent off planet to do the bidding of the Empress, just like everyone else. Okay, you can see why having no say in the matter kind of sucks, but isn't there an opportunity to do some cool stuff in space too? Adaja's face draws up a wry expression. Yeah, with someone else calling all the shots. You keep walking. After what feels like hours, his scouter flashes again. We're here. Whoa. He lets the wall have it with his eye lasers, which, with a resounding roar, it crumbles away. Aside from the spot he destroyed, the rest of the cave is intact. Moonlight spills into space through the impromptu exit. It's over. We were stuck down there for so long that the game has ended. Meaning... Your heart sinks. This is a disaster. He's definitely gonna not want to be your friend after losing this competition he was so invested in. We're the last team standing, which makes us the winners. Heh. <laughs> I knew it. That blue blood loser might have had a stroke of good luck, but she was no match for someone of my station. My victory was a foregone conclusion from the start. Bringing you along was an excellent idea. Your recklessness really came in handy back there. He's thanking you, you realize. Or something close to it. Modestly, you assure him it was no problem. A prince knows when to give credit where credit is due. Celebration is in order, I think. Once we collect our prize. There's a prize? Hell yeah. Dual Strifers offers an impressive cash reward to whoever wins. You'll get a cut as well, of course. Whoa, money? This will be the first time you laid your hands on the stuff since you crash landed. Maybe you'll be able to finally purchase a warm meal or clothing that isn't from somebody else's closet? 
More important than money, though, is the that you've proved that you aren't a complete, total mess up. Screw up. You just earn Adaja's trust and also his friendship. Victory! What, what do they call troll money here? It's V's. It's freaking V's, okay? Is it- oh wait, it kind of almost looks like the Condus's horns. Kind of. With like a- maybe even with the like the slashes being kind of like the Pisces symbol. Yeah, I think that's right. Anyway, we got something to prove here. Boop. And... Friendship streak. One. Okay. Click. Not bad, not bad. Let's see. Looks like that was the only one for that one. So time to go back to the game. We got ourselves a purple blood to befriend. We're on a yucky looking bus. Maybe we should have bought a ticket. We didn't have any money, but now we do. But we're not... <laughs> okay. Uh, she crazy. Okay. It's a Chahut Maynad. Chahut Maynad. I should know what a Maynad is. That sounds familiar. Where, do, where does that sound familiar? Hmm. It doesn't matter. Let's go. <laughs> okay, your gown flutters around you as you hop off the train. You feel like a very grimy Disney princess with no shoes. Like a just a deranged Cinderella who left both glass slippers on the castle steps. I love this. This is great. <laughs> the air horn. <laughs> Okay, is this the one that was done by Toby? I know there was like two songs that were done by Toby, but I don't- I know one of them had to do with clowns, but I don't think it was this one. I guess we'll find out once I actually look into her sound, like her music. Okay? Okay, sorry. Before you can decide in which direction to continue your merry jaunt, it's decided for you. As in, a small bluish missile slams into your midsection and sends you tumbling down the hill behind the train tracks, rolling over and over and- Dang, do you hope you don't kill anyone with your butt? Especially not yourself. You land with a hard thwack on your back. Oh, hi, Amesia! What's up? Are we following the other half of your storyline that I totally didn't get? Hey, it's you! The concussion you just sustained must be giving you serious friend hallucinations. Sorry I hugged you so hard I pushed you down a hill. I forgot how weak and flimsy you are! You take Amesia's offered hand, albeit nervously. Y you kind of skipped out on her back there, waiting until she was in the evolution trap and then escaping from her murder studio. <laughs> Whoa! That scared me, don't do that! Don't, don't do that! I get scared so easily, don't do that! Oh gosh, okay. You've been so naive back then. You didn't know about recoup raccoons or grub cakes or hate dating and- Oh gosh, she's a giant murder clown, isn't it? <laughs> wow! She's even bigger than the adult you saw at the bandit lair. Why? Why ever did you think you've met the largest, meanest jerk this place has to offer? It offers another bigger, meaner one. Without thinking, you put yourself between Amesia and the Purple Blood. Pretty dumb, considering Amesia can pick you up with one hand. But you just rolled down a hill, and you <laughs> aren't in at the peak performance. Chahut! It's about time! This is the one I was telling you about! The one with the precious, precious blood! They're, so they're friends? Aw, she smiles, but she's still creepy! The purple blood's slow, lazy smile somehow makes her face paint even more terrifying. The moseys, she moseys closer, towering over you. Okay, let let me think. It's so tempting to give her like a non-fitting voice for this, but she but she's so big. 
Okay, 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 let's think. Let's, let me think. Okay. Something kind of pious, but also kind of southern, clowny, uh, but also a lady. So let's see. Mm. A true pleasure, small thing. That sounds really creepy, but I love it. Any friend of Little Blue is a friend of mine. Especially one who looks who'd look so pretty on the new page of my scrapbook. Yeah, this is the scrapbooking one. I remember this. I remember this one well enough <laughs> from Troll Call, because not every day you're like Yes, this is a vi this is a purple blood, a high blood that enjoys scrapbooking with blood. And we're like, what? Anyway, your stomach is dissolving into acid fear. Amesia stamps her foot. Don't make murder jokes. My friend is very delicate. You nod furiously. You are so delicate. Just a whiff of murder gives you the vapors. <laughs> Peace and gospel, little blue. I was only playing. Messiahs know I owed a bit of fun. And ain't it a bit hypocritical? Lecturing me? Considering what you are getting up to the first time you and I got to John? Ripping off heads and all? Amesia goes blue. Shahat winks and you experience another spasm of fear. You clench your fist so that she can't see your hand... <laughs> You clench your fists so she can't see your hands are shaking. To distract yourself, you ask her if she and Amesia are Moirails. You figure that's always the safest one to start with. Safer than so, do you guys hate Scrubilot? Chahat starts grinning again and Amesia blushes even harder. N no, Baka, of course not! I'm way too young for quadrants! I know a couple mother chuckers that started younger than you, little blue. Still, there's no point. I mean, you're leaving in a couple peregrines. Aww, she's she's an, almost an adult. Oh, I'm crying. Okay, precious. Amesia stares at the ground sadly for a few seconds before she gets herself back together. But that's why tonight's gonna be the best. Our final hunt. And I'm so glad you're here, too. She beams up at you. You try to smile back, maybe achieving half a grimace. When Shawhat leans over Amesia, it's with... No, when Shawhat leans over Amesia, it's with a certain menacing fondness. Sounds like a party, my vicious sister. Only... We got us a smidge of a scheduling conflict. Huh? The massacre's tonight, little blue? Last massacre, I'll see Planet Side. Gotta present my glutes and testify before my most mirthful messiahs for the last time. Um, you sure didn't get any of that. Every time you think your days of unbound ignorance are behind you, you turn over a stone and find more squirming bits of cultural miasma to suck in. Amesia rolls her eyes. Ugh, more church? That's seriously all you ever do! Sister, we talked about this. To praise the mirthful ones is a privilege and releva revelation. My pusha beats for them. It smashes away through the desolate cage of my thoracic struts. Yeah, I know. You love clown church. You love it so much, you should just put it in a quadrant. <laughs> Jeez, Amesia. Maybe don't shout at the scary giant clown lady. <laughs> Chahut puts a giant hand on Amesia's head, ruffling her hair like she's an angry puppy. Simmer down, girl. Good news is, we got us a tiebreaker. She means you, doesn't she? More decisions. Act usually we strive for it, but today, it's all up to you, stranger. Take me to clown church. Uh, if I say church sucks, she gonna break me into a billion pieces as a heretic of the most highest order. Praise be the clown messiahs. 
Take me to Clown Church. You don't know much about religion, but you have recently become pretty good at reading people. You have the slightest little suspicion that insulting this woman's religion might be unhealthy. Besides, it would be rude. This time, when Chahat turns her painted face to you and gives you another one of those lazy smiles, you're filled with a sudden flush of excitement. What if, what if you can become friends with her? You never thought, you never had a friend this cool or this scary. Amesia rolls her eyes. Ugh, fine. Have fun, I guess. Doing totally boring stuff. You wonder if it's really okay for you to come with Chow Hut. Isn't she worried about showing up with an alien? In the past, I might have got to worrying about it. But now... Screw it. What are they about... No, what are they about to do? Call me? <laughs> Might thank him for that. Do a sister solid, saving me from having set foot on the filthy reaches of space. Never thought I'd see a purple blood want to not conquer things. This is weird. Very weird. Where I hear they don't follow the good word as close as they should. None of them, mother truckers, they here have the globes to step to me. So you should be safe. With me at your side, not even one of those slippery fishes would do anything. Ooh. We're safe from Violet and even Trizza if she shows up. That'd be swish. <laughs> but she wouldn't show up to clown church. The Condis, maybe, but Trizza? No. <laughs> Slippery fishes? Does she mean sea dwellers? You've never actually seen one, which makes sense since they, uh, dwell in the sea. But most people seem to be scared of them. You wonder how much higher in caste they are from the clowns. You wonder what they look like. There's still so many things you don't know. You've never been in a church before, but you've seen them in movies and goth music videos, so you know what to expect. Uh, <laughs> clearly... You haven't seen... Oh gosh, what was that one? I think it was Lecrae. I'm not sure which Lecrae song it was where he was like walking around in church and he was talking about church clothes. Okay. <laughs> I think it was Lecrae. Which music video had the guy sing rapping about church clothes and how you can't be expected to... Yeah, that God accepts you as you are. Which one was that? Sorry, I'm, I'm falling into my Christian music roots. Let's move on to this. Uh, okay, so you know what to expect. Clown Church is not that. Ah, uh, yes, I remember seeing this image and I was like, what the heck? <sighs> wow. Who is that supposed to be? The Virgin, not Mary? <laughs> there are no pews or statues or sad... A sad dude hanging from two perpendicular sticks, but there's an altar and a lot of purple candles and rows and rows of flimsy metal fold-out chairs. And my church, my church doesn't have pews. We got rid of those because they're like if your, they're like if your, like sanctuary is only for Sundays, uh, your church is gonna die. So they're like, nope, we're just gonna we're get, we got chairs. They're comfy chairs, but they're still just chairs. <laughs> anyway. Also, we don't have Jesus hanging on a cross. Because he's off that stuff, son. Anyway. <laughs> the same sugary smell that hangs around Chahut fills the place. Someone took stained glass a little too seriously when they decorated because every inch of the window is covered in multicolored... Ugh, why even front anymore? Every inch is covered in blood. Splatters of it paint the floor and stone walls. It reminds you of that the break room after Connell got murdering all those kids, except this seems deliberate. Like they decided they wanted a bit of yellow in the corners. So they walked some poor gold blood over and gutted them. Welcome to your salvation, little one. <laughs> you almost run out. But no, you can't. You need to make friends with Chahut. You hang on to that as you follow her to the front of the congregation. As you pass, various other clowns send honks of greetings, accompanied by the occasional whoop whoop. Chahut responds with a couple of casual, hey, mother chuckas, but she ignores. But most she ignores. Maybe she's too cool for them. 
You try not to make eye contact with anyone as you go by. Or if you happen to look at anyone, you might throw out the most insane, I'm with her, vi intense vibes of, I'm with her that you can't. I can't read. I lied to you. Okay. A couple trolls look out. No, couple trolls look as though they're out of place as you do. Okay, they're not as out of place since they're actually from this planet. But there's a couple non-purple guys here who look distinctly uncomfortable. A few of them appear to be chained to their chairs. Cool. <laughs> a purple blood is standing on a platform at the front of the congregation and preaching? Rapping? Whatever it is, it sucks. There's a lot of uninventive swearing and weirdly syncopated honks. Everyone here is extremely into it. There's a lot of answering whoops and hell yeah. All Chahad has to do is stand there and smirk at him and he trails off with a nasty, with a nasally honk before scrambling off the church stage. You really wish you knew how to command that kind of respect, then everybody would want to be your friend. Thanks, brothers and sisters. Today is a singular sort of day. For today I took up towards the mountain and saw the fire in the sky. That fires our messiahs, and our messiahs are the fire, feeding a hungry forge of the belly of hell, that sweet salvation of split bone and sulfur colored eyes. <laughs> it was it the heat of eternal damnation or the sweet flame of revelation? I keep mispronouncing revelation, which is a shame for me, anyway. All is red ruin. Whoa was, what was us, darlings? Whoa. It goes on a bit like that for a while. You zone out a little bit. Someone throws a handful of powder into the candle flames, and the more of that sugary sharp scent puffs out as colorful smoke bellows up. So this is, do you have a Protestant version of your clown church? <laughs> do they have guitars and drums? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> the purple bloods all start taking deep whiffs at the stuff. Kind of looks like powder and pixie sticks. Newest member of our congregation. Pixie sticks. Mmm, maybe that's why it smells like sugar in here. Invite them to stand up and give glorious thanks. The whole congregation has gone silent. You realize that Shahat is looking at you, and the other clown priest is looking at you. Actually, every single dang troll in here is looking at you, except for one small dude who appears to be trying to chew off his own hand to free himself from his shackle. Your turn to testify. Don't screw it up, little one. Wimp out or preach! Uh, I'm gonna try preaching and see if that does anything. Preach it! Oh. Oh, crap. They want you to talk? About what? All that stuff Chahat and the other troll were saying, it just sounded like a bunch of bull. So that's what you give them. Just bull. Reams and reams of fresh, non-GMO, caved-age bull. Honestly, you aren't totally sure what to, what you say. Maybe some stuff about part in the sea, loaves and fishes, a dome and a rock. Dome and a rock. That, that, that's uh, Islam. And... Okay. Throw a couple whoop whoops in there for effect. Hoping nobody accuses you of cultural appropriation. Luckily, the crowd is feeling it. They all honk and echo what you say, even the cultural illusions they can't possibly understand. They take turns swigging fa Fago for the uh, communal chalice, passing it around. You can't help glancing over Chahat every so often. Sure, all these weirdos are catching what you're throwing, but she's the one whose opinion you actually care about. She's your current friendship target. She's nodding in approval, occasionally crossing her hands over her chest in what looks like a kind of a gang symbol that must be a religious gesture. You finish with something about foxes and the jaws of the universe. <laughs> the convergence of fate and the, the cynical nature of reality. Time is a flat circle. You think you've really filled with the spirit, whatever the heck that means. Could be just the weird smoke. I didn't... I knew I didn't make a mistake when I put my faith in you, little one. She puts, pushes several dudes out of the way to lean over you, and you don't feel fear now as much as intense pride. Dang, but it feels good to have 50 clowns honking at you for pulling something straight out of your butt. Little one is kind of creepy, and you wish she'd stop saying it, but you guess it's accurate. You are little compared to her, and there is only one of you. Come here, darling. 
Oh, that's an upgrade. Darlin', that's friendly. Get up here. Up? How? The two younger purple bloods grab you by the legs. Oh. You're not gonna kill me, are you? A church sways around you and you find yourself at clown height, face to face with Chahad. Up close you might see the cracks of her makeup and it might be the light in there, but her yellow eyes look tinted purple. They look tinted red, man. She pulls you close, one giant claw trip tipping your chin up. She's so close. She leans in and your whole body flashes hot. Oh gosh. This You embrace those big clown lips. You brace for those big clown lips. Instead, Chahat clamps a hand over your mouth. You jerk as your air supply is promptly cut off. The clown holding you stagger until you remember that you can breathe through your nose. She's spray painting us with weird paint. Oh, okay. You see something out of your peripheral vision and then something sticky and cold sprayed into your cheek. An acidic stench makes you choke. Mm -hmm. You struggle, but the clown won't let you go. Chahat sprays something on the other side of your face. You feel it's sinking tacky and stinging into your, the skin of your cheeks. She releases you for a moment and switches the can of spray paint to the other hand. What the hell? Is this even supposed to be used on the skin? Probably not. Hold still, darling. She takes another can from a nearby troll and sprays a line across your forehead, her own brow furrowing in concentration. You know what she's doing. She's baptizing you, covering you in the paint of her people. You're being initiated. You can hardly believe it. Tears threaten at the corner of your eyes as you realize that you're actually becoming part of a group. Someone on this terrible planet is actually letting you into their inner circle. Even if it is the circle of terrible clowns who go around murdering people and drinking the worst soda in the galaxy. Don't get too overcome now, small thing. I don't rightly even know what you are or where something like you came from. But I can feel your spirit flowing through the alien veins of yours. It's godly, my little one. Amazing, this is so good! Anyone who initiates you into their weird cult definitely wants to get all up in your friendship grill. Shahat paints another line, this time over your nose. The paint is starting to stink. The paint on your forehead especially. Oh wait, that's not paint. That's... Shahat drops the spray can. She's looking at her fingers. Oh no, you've seen that expression before on someone bluer and much shorter. Deep crimson drips off her claws. Oh man, we're, we're bleeding, aren't we? Oh no, our skin is too thin, we're delicate. After weeks of rainbow blood, your own color of blood looks strange to you. Now that you think about it, it's been a while since you've seen your own blood. Ha <laughs> wild, you must be getting better survival instincts. Precious blood. Precious indeed, sister. The two other purple bloods put you down with subservient honks. Wait, are they gonna get really mad at me because I have mutant blood? Like the signless, who they hate. I'm taking a sip of water. Well, we dead. Goodbye, everyone. Okay. All the other clowns here treat Chahut with reverence bordering on awe. Is it because she's the oldest or the largest or maybe she's the most coolest? Your feet barely hit the floor before Chahut takes you by the hand. You smile up at her, happy to go anywhere she leads. Friendship feels so good, especially with people who are bigger and stronger and cooler than you are, which is basically everyone on this planet, but Chahat is especially strong and cool. You're so busy. You're so busy feeling great about your new elite status that at first you don't realize what's happening, where Chahat is leading you. It's to a corner of the church that is a little more bare than other spots. She's gonna kill us. As in, there isn't much blood, as in, it's the perfect canvas for some fresh blood. Some precious, precious mutant blood. You don't know why Chahat didn't go for you right when you met. Maybe the time wasn't right. Maybe the sight of the red stuff has triggered something in her murder troll hindbrain. Regardless, you get the feeling that you're about to be re reunited with the color of your blood quite suddenly and thoroughly. Wait! You thought you were getting initiated. Hell yeah. You're an initiate, my dazzling crimson darling. An initiate of the rarest and most laudable power. A blood initiate. A sacrificial bar beast. You ain't gonna get the better off than that. Well, when she puts it like that. Nope, you'd still rather not die.
Game over. We're too special. Uh, screw it. Mm, boop. Turn that off. Okay, let's wimp out now. Load. Wimp. You stand there in a cacophony of honks and whoops trying to dredge up a little spirit inside you, but you just can't. All the noise sounds so much like jeering, and you think you've gotten used to negative reinforcement, but apparently it's still enough to trip you up. You open your mouth and all that comes out is a croak, like you're a frog. A frog of failure. Shahad's big hand lands on your shoulder. She looks wistful through the clown paint. Well, who knows? I mean, pff, the vast croak, son. I don't know. That's okay, hun. Sit down before you strain something. In Encased in a fugue of shame, you do. Uh, why couldn't you have just kept it together for once in your pathetic life? The clown next to you gives you a consoling pat on the knee and offers you a half-empty bottle of Fago. You're so despondent that you barely cast a, a thought of juggalo germs or the fact that Fago is disgusting. It hits your taste buds like a, <laughs> like a slap to the face. All around you, the congregation's getting rowdier. The troll beside you shrugs his shoulders like, what can you do? He has a hat and a charming smile. At least you think he does. You're starting to feel a little... weird. Fago is an alcoholic, is it? Apparently it is. I'd go easy on that stuff if I were you, the troll says. His hand hasn't left your leg. In fact, it's moved from your knee to your thigh. The first time's always rough. Whatever. You're fine. You know all about controlled substances. You're just a really good at drugs, okay? You're a serious drugger. Druggist? For real, though? What is this stuff? You got high with Sarava and tipsy with Chixie. <laughs> yeah, that rhymes. We should put that in her next rap. But this is different. This is your brain blowing wide open and the atmosphere pouring in. This is the cosmos kissing your frontal lobe with way too much tongue. Hey. This is my supplicant. Maybe find your own? Shahat is standing next to you again. She removes the clown guy's hand from your thigh and it ex extrate <sighs> extricates the bottle from your grip. Hey, you weren't done with that. On the other side of the church, someone throws another handful of colorful powder into the fire. More smoke billows up and you feel another wave of dizziness. Maybe it's the interaction of the fago with the smoke. Is that how science works? Ugh. Such bad form, says the troll who'd given you the fago. Bringing an alien to your last massacre. One would think you had no respect for your messiahs at all. I finally got it now. It's mass. This is Catholic clown church. <laughs> I'm stupid. But then again, I wasn't I wasn't raised Catholic. No, I've only the only times I've ever gone to any Catholic service was funerals. So, sorry dudes. Okay. I think brothers and sisters that I might agree with that. <gasps> A voice rings out across the church. At first you think it's in your head, the product of whatever weird soup all the com com oops, competing substances have created, but everyone else hears it too. She looks so scared. Chowhut goes rigid beside you, her big, vicious mouth stretched into a bit of an O oh of shock. The congregation falls to its knees in a clattering awe, a clattering wave. Seriously, you've never heard a crowd of people go so quiet so loudly. Chairs are kicked out of the way or knocked over. Kneeling down, Chowhut's head comes to your chest. She and the clown in the hat push down one of your shoulders. Mother Chucka, get down! You hit the deck. You half expect the blood splatters to seep through your dress, but it's just crusts flaky and dry underneath your knees. You. Sister. That your alien? Where the hell is the voice coming from? It's deep and gravelly and probably male. Oh, the, 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 the window. That's an actual high blood. Holy crap. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Mildly terrifying. Was that the Grand High Blood? Holy crud. Did we just have a Grand High Blood just freaking throw himself in? Okay. Oh, hold up. You definitely thought that was one of Remelay's knockoff pen paintings hanging behind the altar. It turns out to be a screen, which has now turned to a gray silhouette with horns. Uh, is everybody here bowing to some dude who literally Skyped to clown church? That doesn't even have an... 
And that doesn't even have an user pick? Your Excellency, eh? I wouldn't describe him as my alien exactly. A little too pathetic to really put much bother to. There's a murmur of agreement from the surrounding trolls. Dang, tough crowd. A long snort of breath crackles into static. Who are you to say who or what is pathetic? Chahut winces. You're all feckless wrigglers without, without a bean in your think pans. All of the lowbloods in here look absolutely terrified, which is nothing new, but for once they aren't the only ones. Everyone here is afraid, the purple guys included. You, come closer, little heretic. Let me get a gander. Yet, is there a... I don't see any camera, though. Me? Who? What the heck do you mean, who, little sister? The mother... <laughs> the mother trucker I'm jabbing my point stuff at. You and Shahat stare, share a quick, nervous glance. Her throat bobs visibly. Sir, uh, I think you got your webcam turned off. Oh, dang, hold up. <laughs> hold up. Wait a minute. Put a little love in it. Okay. You hear a lot of rustling and swearing. All of you hang in the awkward limbo of an old person struggling with technology. <laughs> oh, it is. It's the Grand High Blood. Oh. But I don't think it's Gam- I don't think it's uh, a Makarin. I think it's someone else, but I'm not sure. The screen flickers and you can just make out a pair of hulking shoulders. Sir? You got the light behind you? Listen up. Never mind the light, mother trucker. You, the homeless one in the rumpus robe. Come closer, child. I'm wearing a dress, okay? <laughs> Oh, you! Of course it's you. Being the main character is exhausting. <laughs> oh, the background just moved closer, but she didn't move at all. Sorry. You move closer to the altar. Although you aren't exactly sure where the camera is, this guy is someone you would be able to tell if he were ever... <laughs> this guy is someone. You'd be able to tell that even if everyone in here wasn't bowing to him. His voice has a certain quality to it. That's close enough. I'm not trying to look up your snuff nub, child. Do you have any notion as to who I am? None, except that he is possibly important. It's always a real good time when important people get interested in your insignificant butt. I decide whose butt is insignificant in this house, you comprehend? Uh, sure, sir, excellency. How long have you been rambling amongst my brethren? Hmm, at least a couple weeks. No more than a month. How many are here with you? Just you. An alien invasion force of one. All just wandering the countryside. And still pulling in oxygen? Would have thought someone would have picked their dentation with you by now. <laughs> Same. Same. You got any muscle definition, Riggler? You show him the empty gun show. <laughs> As in, you show him very empty weapons locker it is. I read. Too weak for the front lines. Too ugly to fill a pail with. He laughs low and lecherously. L lecherous. Although your strut sticks ain't bad. Yeah, thank you. I've been walking. <laughs> oh, did the giant clown just say you have a nice leg over troll FaceTime? You look at Chahat for help. She's too busy checking out your gams. <laughs> Sober, you might have been uncomfortable. Fago drunk you is pretty zen about it. You're sure that's only a matter of time before you screw an alien. If it's gotta be a big giant clown, well, so be it. <sighs> Shooting high, aren't you? Now you're just feeling silly. You assure this guy that you aren't really after that kind of stuff. There's only one thing you really, truly long for in this world. What is that, child? Power? Wealth? The right to keep living? Yikes. You realize that everyone in this dang church is looking at you, waiting for your answer. Chahut looks like she wants to grab your shoulders and shake you. Jeez, no pressure. Friendship, you tell him. He laughs long and heartily at that one. You weather it stoically. You. Bigger. No, you. Bigger, significantly more attractive mother trucker. Chahut comes to attention. What's your cast name, child? Maynard, Excellency. 
Okay, so that's what the la what now what last names are called. Okay, cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, Maynard, Excellency. If I understand rightly, you are about to undergo the ordeals. Chahat nods. She looks a little seasick. You're not sure what the ordeals are, but everything about them sounds bad, including the name. Maybe get your s <laughs> okay. Maybe get your stuff shot with this one right here. They seem to have the strategy of surviving against all reasonable odds and decency. You could probably use a friend like them. He jabs another big finger at you. And Wriggler? Yeah? Don't let me see your face again. The call disconnects and the screen goes black. Blank. That's totally the Grand High Blood. Hold it for crap. We just got threatened by someone really, really high up on the chain. And it might be a Makara. It might be the alternate version of Kurlos. I don't know. Anyway, the call disconnects and the screen goes blank. When you point yourself towards the front of the church, everyone scrambles to get out of your way. It's like the big clown's attention has conveyed some honorary status on you. Probably nobody will mess with you or for at least a half an hour. You aren't really going anywhere, but you need some fresh air before you pass out. Shahan emerges soon after. She looks nearly as winded as you feel. You ask her if she's mad at you, since that could be potentially dangerous for both your life and your burgeoning friendship. Mad? Why would I be mad? Because your inexplicably magnetic charm worked on both my best girl and the figurehead of my church. You're flushed. The real question is, did it work on her? Chahat sighs. What the hell? Old Mother Trucker told me to listen to whatever it is you can teach. Right, right, he did. That basically makes you the two of your friend. Makes two, makes, okay. That basically makes the two of you friends by theocratic decree. <laughs> Guess so. So darling, teach me your ways. Well, first of all, you fall down a lot. <laughs> yeah! Woo! That was awesome! I love that one. That was great. We never learn anything about the clowns. Oh, gosh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. That was awesome. And record time, too. Ah, <sighs> okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna get up and walk around a little bit, but then I'll be right back, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Hey there. Consider becoming a patron, just like the phenomenal Gerald Thomas, Bleed Red, and Alexander Madeline.